My apologies, but I'm about to go through Hellenistic architecture at the speed of light. I think we're nearing architecture overload, and the archaic and classic period temples, which we've already covered, are the most important Greek contributions to architecture. Hellenistic architecture, like Hellenistic sculpture, becomes more varied, more cosmopolitan, more expressive, and sometimes in keeping with the greatly expanded empire, simply much more vast. This sanctuary at Delphi is notable for its round structure and for its combination of Doric and Corinthian orders. Just as Hellenistic sculptors were more open to the experience of non-Greeks, Hellenistic architects were more willing to mix up styles and to experiment. Uh, we see that here too. Notice the engaged columns, which were typical of Egyptian architecture, and again, this innovative new Corinthian column. I said that the Greek temples were their most typical and famous architecture, but really these impressive theaters are a close second. Note where we get our words for orchestra and for scene. It's also worth noting just how vast, how huge these theaters were. Again, Hellenistic art is all about scale. If you get to the video, you will learn more about the the amazing acoustics of these theaters. These theaters had no electronic sound systems, yet viewers in the back row could actually hear the actors deliver their lines. Okay, this is the one work you really need to know from the Hellenistic period. Pergamon was a major Hellenistic capital in what today is Western Turkey. This tribute to King Adelos's victory against the Gauls is, in the best Hellenistic style, huge, and it was designed to reflect the king's great wealth as well as his military victory. It was also deliberately designed to echo uh, the great Athenian victory over the Persians and the Parthenon. This altar was located near the royal palace on the city's Acropolis. This is not the actual altar, by the way, but a reconstruction in a museum in Berlin. Uh, this model should give you some sense of where the altar fit into the Acropolis. The second photo shows the famous friezes at the bottom of the imposing staircase to the altar. And we have another gigantomachy, or fight between the titans and the family of gods, uh, who would overthrow them. So, what Hellenistic elements do you see? Well, note the twisted bodies, the violent movement, the expressions of agony, the drapery that seems to be blowing in the wind, and above all, that sense of drama that is so characteristic of Hellenistic art, and again reflects the very important role that drama played in Greek culture. These are not gods standing serenely above the fray. They are fighting tooth and nail. Adelos I wanted to identify his city with Athens, hence Athena's prominent place in this frieze. Note how much more passionately she's portrayed. You can see this even more with the face, even with the face missing, uh, than the more sober Athena of the Parthenon. We've seen these statues before and talked about not only their expressive power, but also the sculptor's willingness to acknowledge the humanity and suffering of foreigners. Now you know where they belonged on the altar of Zeus in Pergamum. I visited this site in Western Turkey about 25 years ago with my husband and children, uh, and it blew me away. Not so much for its beauty, though truly it is beautiful, but for its incredibly massive size. Uh, the little fixture, uh, figure there kind of captures that. Uh, it's hard to see in a slide. This is Hellenism. Again, in massive scale, Greek culture on steroids. If there's time left, we'll close with a video that describes Hellenistic culture, the city of Pergamum, and above all, spectacular Greek theaters. Just one more Greek lecture to go, Greek vase painting, and then we move on to Rome.